Hello. So now we come to the last capsule of this third week, and uh, that is what is called as odds and ends. So we'll discuss a few odds and ends, uh, specifically one particular thing about matrices which didn't fit into the general scheme of things, but it's very important, and that is block matrices. Before we take that, let us take an example of computation of a determinant. So I want to compute the determinant of one plus a squared a1 a2 dot 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 a1 an a2 a1 1 plus a2 squared dot 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 etc a2 a2 an and so on the last row is a n a1 a n a2 dot 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 1 plus a n squared note that if a1 is 0 then what happens to the first row the first row is simply 1 0 0 0 0 0 and then we can expand the determinant by the first row and we are and we are down to computing n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix or the same type so we may as well assume that a1 is non-zero so now just for convenience let us call the matrix a we want to compute the determinant of a just observe that this a is basically identity plus a naught where what is your a naught a naught is a i a j the, the symmetric matrix a i a j the reason for writing this a as a sum of these two matrices it's not really it's not strictly needed but i just displayed it like this just to make just to bring out the fact that this a naught that's a matrix of rank one in fact all rows are proportional to each other and so because the matrix a naught has rank one it is very natural to perform row operations R2 prime equal to R2 minus A2 by A1 R1. R3 prime equal to R3 minus A3 by A3 by A1 R1, etc. Rn prime equal to Rn minus An by A1 R1. In other words, from Rj, from the jth row, subtract of Aj by A1 times the first row. So what will happen? I should perform that operation on I and I should perform that operation on A0, A0 obviously. If I perform that operation on A0, what happens? I get this matrix, the lots of zeros below. And if I perform the matrix on I, I get this very nice uh, pattern, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so all in all, this new matrix, this new matrix, that is if I start out this, this matrix and make this row operations, the sequence of row operations, I will land up with this matrix A tilde. What is A tilde? 1 plus a1 squared a1 a2 dot 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 a1 a n the second row is minus a2 by a1 1 0 0 0 0 0 the third row and and so on the last row is minus a n by a1 etc and there is z after after that there's zero and then the last entry is one so you can you can actually uh, do this calculation and you can do it for yourself and you can check that this is what we get. So now what you have, uh, now what we have done is that I'm going to pull out this a1 from all the from all the uh, from all the second from second row third row etc. So I'm going to write this as uh, this as one plus a1 squared a1 a2 etc a1 an. I'm going to write as minus a2 minus an because I'm going to remove the one upon a1 and I'm going to put the a1 over here, a1 over here, etc. Remember that multiplying uh, multiplying a given row by a number is equivalent to multiplying the whole determinant by that number. So uh, a tilde is obtained from a by the sequence of row operations of a very specific kind, subtracting off from a given row a multiple of some other row. That does not change the value of the determinant, remember? So the determinant of a tilde is going to be the same as the determinant of a. So determinant of a equals determinant of a tilde and then I pulled out this 1 upon a1, 1 upon a2, uh, sorry 1 upon a1 from the second row, third row, fourth row etc. So I write it as a1 to the power minus n minus 1. So factorizing a 1 upon a1 means I have to put a1 here. Factorizing a, a 1 upon a1 means I have to put a1 here. So that's how I get this a1s for the 2, 2 position, 3, 3 position, n, n position. So this is the determinant that I need to compute now i need to perform one uh, bunch of row operations so what what do i do? i need to kill this a1 a2 term how do i kill this a1 a2 term subtract from the first row a2 times the sorry 
excuse me, add to the, so, so subtract from the first row, A2 times the second row. Subtract from the first row, AN times the last row and so on. So this bunch of row operations I need to perform. And what happens is I get, I kill A1, A2, A1, A3, A1, AN, I get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. But the 1, 1 entries, 1 plus A1 squared, plus A2 squared, plus dot, 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 plus AN squared, and A1's down this diagonal. And so expanding this by the first row, I get this A1 to the power N minus 1 will cancel with this A1 to the power minus N minus 1, and I'll be left with 1 plus A1 squared plus A2 squared plus dot, 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 plus AN squared as the value of the determinant. So this is one calculation that we have done, the long way, in fact. Later on, we shall see a way to arrive at this determinant without performing any calculations. Directly by inspection, we can uh, get the value of this determinant after we do the chapter on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. After we do the chapter on eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we shall find a more efficient way to arrive at this same result. So that is a nice example. And this example is specifically chosen because this example appears very frequently in multivariable calculus. In multivariable calculus, when you, in, when you do integration along surfaces in R3 or hypersurfaces in Rn, you will exactly encounter this determinant. And so this, is, this has some geometrical or uh, significance in calc or significance in calculus. The other thing is the is a real um, is is a, is an appendix, if you like, or a coda to this chapter to this chapter on determinants, and this is called block multiplication of matrices. Very frequently, you this idea of block multiplication will pop up, and you should not be taken by surprise. So you should know how to deal with how how to do block multiplication of matrices. It's very easy. And let us just dispose it off in a few pages. So first of all, let us consider the simplest block matrices, a 2n cross 2n matrix. What is a 2n cross 2n matrix? I can think of a 2n cross 2n matrix as made as being made up of 4n cross n matrices. So I take 4n cross n matrices, A, B, C, D. Each of them is an n cross n matrix. So if I put them, if I put A, B, C, D as a 2 by 2 block, then I get a 2n cross 2n matrix. So this writing a 2n cross 2n matrix in this form, A, B, C, D, is called partitioning the matrix. Partitioning the matrix. So now how to multiply a pair of 2n cross 2n matrices? So I've given two such matrices. So I'm going to partition each of them. So I'm going to do a partitioning. I'm going to do the first matrix M as A, B, C, D. And the second matrix N as P, Q, R, S, where A, B, C, D, P, Q, R, S are all N cross N matrices. So what is the product? The product is basically the block A, B, C, D multiplied with P, Q, R, S. Suppose I do the blindly, I do the multiplication. Suppose I blindly do the multiplication. I simply get A, P plus B, R, A, Q plus B, S, C, P plus D, R, C, Q plus D, S. Now you will object. You will say that A, B, C, D are not real numbers. So the so this kind of multiplication needs justification. In other words, I just do a formal multiplication of two by two matrices, and I get I get this I get double I get star, and I claim that A P plus B R. What is A P plus B R? That's an n cross n matrix. A Q plus B S is an n cross n matrix, and so on. So this particular thing that you get is a two n cross two n matrix. And this 2n cross 2n matrix is exactly going to be the product of m and n. The product of m and n that we were trying to that we were trying to compute. Now this will need a justification. So how do I justify this? So exercise, prove this equation, this uh, prove this rule for block multiplication. So just to get, get you started on this exercise, let us check. So now how do I have to prove? First, let us do a simple uh, simple exercise. Let us consider a column vector in R2n. Column vector with 2n entries. x1, x2, xn, y1, y2, yn. There are 2n entries. The first n entries I'm going to uh, abbreviate it as x and the last n entries I'm going to abbreviate it as 
Why? In other words, this is also a partition matrix. This is also kind of a partitioning of a two and cross one matrix into uh, in two in, in 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 two components. The first the first entry is a n cross one matrix. The second entry is also an n cross one matrix. So we have partitioned this two n cross one matrix into two n cross one matrices. So first, let us see how to multiply A B C D with a partition. V uh, with a, with a another partition matrix X Y right V V remember is X X and Y this column X Y so again a formal manipulation will be A X plus uh, so so put the X and put the Y and it will be A X plus B Y C X plus D Y first let us verify this simpler identity okay A X plus B Y is an n cross one matrix C X plus D Y is again an n cross one matrix and so as far as as far as sizes of the matrix are concerned, everything is working out. Let us verify double star. Directly do the directly do the verification. A is an n cross n matrix. Write it incompletely. A11, A12, da da da, A1n, da da da, A n1, A n2, da da da, A n n. Similarly, write B, B11, B12, B1n, etc. B n1, B n2, B n n. Write C, C11, C12, C1n, etc. C n1, C a2, C n n, and likewise for D. And then you put this x1, x2, xn, y1, y2, yn. Just completely do the matrix multiplication the, the usual way. Very first lecture. How did you do the matrix multiplication? Do that and see what you get. You're going to get exactly this double star. So, so this equation double star has been verified. Now we want to check this condition. Now we want to check that if I multiply these two blocks, A, B, C, D, with the block matrix PQRS, I get this block matrix AP plus BR, AQ plus BS, CP plus DR, CQ plus DR. Now, how do I verify the identity of two matrices? How do I check the two matrices are identical? One way to do it is prove that the first columns are the same, prove that the second columns are the same, and so on. So let us check it column-wise. Let us verify the identity column-wise. Having established double star, we now check that we now check the correctness of this equation. So check it column wise. Check that the column wise they're equal. The first column on the left hand side should be the same as the first column on the right hand side. What is the first column of a matrix? First column of a matrix, remember, you obtain by multiplying the matrix to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you compute A, B, C, D, P, Q, R, S, and you apply it to the 2 and cross 1 matrix, 1 followed by zeros. Okay, so what do you get? We already checked how to multiply a block matrix with a column vector. We already done that. Just now we have done that. So it will basically be, uh, it is, now I'm going to call the first n entries of this as E1 cap 0. So P times E1 cap plus Q times 0. So that is P times E1 cap. R times E1 cap plus S times 0, so R times E1 cap. So, so I had done the multiplication of PQRS with this 2N cross 1. We got this. What is PE1 cap? PE1 cap is exactly the first column of P and RE1 cap is the first column of uh, R. So again, this is a column, this is like an X and this is like a Y in the previous, in the previous. So again, it will be AX plus BY kind of a business. So APE1 cap plus B R E 1 cap, C P E 1 cap plus D R E 1 cap. Because you have checked the rule for block ma block matrices where you got a two by two, uh, where you got a, where you got a two, a two by two block consisting of N cross N matrices and you got a two, two by one block consisting of N cross one matrix. That we checked that double star, we checked double star. So we got this. So what is this? This, but this is going to be the first column of a P plus B A P plus B R of E1 cap. A P plus B R of E1 cap is nothing but the first column of A P plus B R. C P plus D R of E1 cap is the first column of C P plus D R. So we have checked that the first column on the left hand side is the same as the first column on the right hand side. Do that, do the same kind of uh, mathematics with all the all the columns. Similarly, check that the jth column of both sides of star agree. And thereby, you would have checked the correctness of this 
block matrix multiplication. Please carry out this exercise by yourself. Convince yourself how to multiply uh, matrices which are given in block, which are, which are partitioned. Let us look at a simple example of this block multiplication of matrices. So I'm going to take a lambda is a three cross three matrix. Lambda is a three cross three matrix. I have taken a three cross three skew symmetric matrix. But the skew symmetry will come up, come up later on. It's not going to come up in this page. So I want the exercise is compute the determinant of the 2n cross 2 or the 6 by 6 matrix. This is a 6 by 6 matrix. I minus lambda, lambda. I written the 6 by 6 matrix has been written as a, in block form. Four blocks of 3 by 3 matrices. Four blocks of 3 by 3 matrices. The block the the partition uh, the, the partitioning of a six by six matrix into four three by three matrices which are the i minus lambda lambda i so that is my matrix that's my matrix a now if i want to uh, if i suppose if this uh, instead of i if you had one one and if you had a scalar lambda minus lambda and a scalar lambda then how do you calculate the determinant the way you calculate the determinant will be to make uh, to make this a one to entry as zero, right? In other words, you would like to add to the second row, add to the second row. I think I should be um, minus lambda times the first row. I think I made a mistake. You would add to the first row, excuse me, add to the first row, uh, lambda times the second row. Or you could also, do, or you could also do the same thing. You could also add to the, or you could add to the second row minus lambda times the first row that is also that should also be fine that that should also be i mean okay either you have two options either make this instead of this make this minus lambda uh, kill this uh, one two entry or kill the two n entry either, either of the two options are okay so here i'm suggesting that you add to the second row minus lambda times the first row so th th that means that that will kill the two n entry now what is the now what is the logic uh, behind doing a row operation remember performing a row operation on a matrix is equivalent to pre multiplying the matrix by the corresponding elementary matrix so what is the corresponding elementary matrix i should obtain it from ii so add to the second row minus lambda times the first row the corresponding elementary matrix is e the corresponding elementary matrix is e now you will object you will say that this is not really an elementary row operation because these rows are not really rows of uh, they, they are not rows really they are actually blocks they are actually uh, it's it's not really a single row i'm taking a i'm taking a bunch of n rows the second row here is really not one single row it's a bunch of n rows so how do you what do you mean what do you mean by saying that performing this row operation is equal to pre-multiplying the matrix by the corresponding elementary matrix. Let us verify. Let us verify this rule directly. Let us multiply E and A. Let us multiply E A. So what is E A? I 0 minus lambda I. And what is A? I minus lambda lambda I. Let us apply the rule for block multiplication. The rule for block multiplication is you're going to get i times i plus zero times lambda. That will be the that will be the first entry. Second entry will be minus lambda plus zero. That's how you see a minus lambda there. The two one entry will be the two one the block in the two one position will be minus lambda i plus i lambda. That is zero. And the and the two two block will be lambda squared plus i. Okay, but that is exactly what you're going to get. But 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 that but so that is exactly what you're going to get if you do the if you do the multi if you do if you do the row operation directly. If you add to the second row minus lambda times the first row, you're going to kill the you're going to kill the two one entry and you're going to get i plus lambda squared. So instead of so this uh, so what I said is that the the basic rule adding to a given row a multiple of the first row formally carries over even for block multiplication. Even for block matrices, the formal rule is correct. That's what we have checked. We have checked that we have actually done the multiplication of E and A, and we have gotten the desired result. But now, so so now determinant of now what is the determinant of E? The determinant of E is one, right? So A 
can be determinant of a is the same as determinant of ea with a product theorem but determinant of ea is the same. but what is ea ea is this matrix i minus lambda 0 i plus lambda squared but the, uh, so this is what what is this uh, what is this determinant the value of this determinant is determinant of i plus lambda squared now how do i go from this step to this step how do i go from this step to this step that i'd like you to i'd like you to prove that yourself the, the justification from here to that more generally when you have a when you have a block mat when you have a partition matrix i p 0 q when you have a block matrix i p 0 q and i want to calculate the determinant i'm going to get the determinant of q all are n cross n blocks you first expand by the first row you'll get the smaller matrix you get keep expanding by the first row n times after n iterations you'll get this equation so this is so this is generally true so in particular this the determinant i minus lambda 0 i plus lambda squared is basically determinant of i plus lambda squared now how do i further simplify this determinant of i plus lambda squared that we shall see later we'll we have to further to to carry out the calculation further to further simplify this we will we will have to rely on I, the theory of eigenvalues and eigenvectors okay that we will postpone another example of block multiplication i'm going to take the block matrix j j is the block matrix 0 minus i n i n 0 a is a matrix of what size a is a matrix of size 2n by 2n j is a matrix of size 2n by 2n okay so now i'm going to i'm going to choose a matrix a such that a transpose j a equal to g so a is a matrix such that a transpose j a equal to j exercise show that determinant of a is either plus one or minus one how to do that it is very easy a transpose j a equal to j means determinant of a transpose j a equal to determinant of j use a the product theorem determinant of a transpose into determinant of j into determinant of a determinant of j is non-zero j is a non-singular matrix so determinant of j cancels on both sides Determinant of A transpose is the same as determinant of A. So determinant of A, the whole square is 1. So determinant of A is either plus 1 or it's minus 1. In fact, in fact, determinant of A has to be 1. It can't be minus 1. You can rule out, you can eliminate the possibility determinant of A is minus 1. But that elimination of that possibility is not completely obvious. It requires some work and uh, we can't do it at this stage you can but a lot of wrestling there's one way to do it is to do a lot of wrestling and get get the result and the other way to do it is to do it cleverly using eigenvalues and eigenvectors so we are not going to do the wrestling match we are going to we want going to do it cleverly but later if time permits however however if n equal to one if n equal to one then j is a two cross two matrix 0 minus 1 1 0 and a is a 2 cross 2 matrix a b c d then this equation reads take the transpose of a b c d multiply by j write down a b c d and you write get j and write j again do the matrix multiplication and see what you get you can actually check that a d minus b c is 1 so for a, for the n equal to 1 case you can directly verify this that the determinant of a must be one and not minus one so the case when n equal to one you can check by yourself okay now next question is an exercise for you we had talked about multiplication of block matrices 2n cross 2n block matrices what about rectangular matrices suppose i got a rectangular matrix of size n plus m cross k plus l and I do this partitioning. A is a n cross k block. B is a n cross l block, etc. C is a m cross k block, and D is a m cross l block. What should be the block sizes of P, Q, R, S? How would you specify the sizes of the block P, Q, R, S? 
such that the block multiplication is possible. So that what, what I want AP plus BR, AQ plus BS, CP plus DR and CQ plus DS. You, do, uh, do you think that this product of these two uh, border partition matrices will be exactly this partition matrix? How should I specify the sizes of P and Q, P, Q, R, S? Please think about this and second, is this equation correct? True or false? Is this equation a correct equation? Is this block multiplication rule correct? Please verify do the verification okay finally let us now that i introduce this now that i introduce this business of the j matrix let's do some let's play some games with the j matrix now let g be the set of all matrices 2n cross 2n matrices a such that a transpose j a equal to j that is pick all those matrices a with the property a transpose j a equal to a is, does the identity matrix satisfy this? Does A equal to identity qualify? Yes, it does qualify. So surely the identity matrix is in G. Is J in G? Yes, it is. Is it true that if A transpose J A equal to J and B transpose J B equal to J, then is it true that A B transpose J A B equal to J? Please check. Answer is yes. So if, if A and B are in G, then AB is also in G. Also, if A is a matrix which satisfies A transpose J A equal to J, then A inverse will also satisfy the condition A inverse transpose J A inverse equal to J. In other words, if A is in G, then A inverse is also in G. Okay. Remember that uh, uh, such a if, if A is a matrix with this property that A transpose J A equal to J, then the determinant of A is plus minus 1. In, in fact, it's going to be plus 1, but that's a different story. And so the, the, such a matrix is invertible. So A inverse makes sense. Okay. So this is a very curious property of the set of matrices G. Whenever the identity matrix is in G, whenever two matrices are in G, the product is also in G. And whenever a matrix is in G, its inverse is also in G. So suppose you've got a set of matrices. Suppose you've got a set of M cross N matrices such that the identity matrix is in, in the set. If you pick two elements A and B, if you take two matrices A and B in the set, the product is in the set. If A is in the set, then A inverse is also in the set. Then such a set is called a group of matrices. So what we have proved is that G, the set of all matrices satisfying this equation, A transpose J equal to J, forms a group, is a group of matrices. This group has a certain name. It is called the symplectic group. And this symplectic group is one of the most important groups that plays a very, very crucial role in modern physics. I think we'll stop this uh, here. And with this, the material for the th uh, third week